Aloha. Welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. I know you're expecting to see Danielia and John today, but they're off on a much needed vacation and they've asked me to host in their place today, which I'm honored to do. Thank you. My name is Vanessa Perez and welcome to the show. The goal of Keys to Success show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career or your business. Jason Kimmel is the CEO of Glacier City Foods located up in Anchorage in Alaska and he joined Daniela and John last week on the show. You can see his words of wisdom at the Newman Consulting Services website at newmanconsultingservices.com or on their landing page, danelia.org. That's D-A-N-E-L-I-A.org. The theme for today is, Dear Past, thank you for the lessons. Dear Future, I'm ready now. Joining me in the studio today is my honoured guest, Master Gunnery Sergeant Martin Trujillo. He's the Operations Chief for the Marine Corps Forces Pacific in Hawaii, and they're located up on the hill at Camp Smith. Mahalo for joining us today, Master Gunnery Sergeant Trujillo. Hey, do you think it's okay if I call you Marty? Yes, please, Vanessa, uh, by all means. <laughs> thanks, Marty. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Um, what I'd really like to cover is, uh, you know, if you're able to share a little bit of your wisdom with us and our viewers on what inspired you to join the Marine Corps almost 30 years ago. Uh, third, well, let's see, coming up on 30 years, uh, back in 1986, 87 time frame. Uh, during that time, Cold War, uh, was an avid uh, football player in the st uh, state of Colorado. I saw a photo of you, Marty. It was very cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very young at that age, but uh, was looking for a challenge. Uh, and in that challenge uh, in Colorado at that time, there wasn't a lot of opportunity that was available. Uh, now, as I look back 30 years ago, I uh, was definitely grateful for the lessons that I had through the coaches and through the educators that uh, allowed me to actually see uh, what mm -hmm. opportunities were in uh, were available at that time through the military and uh, which perpetuated to me where I am now. That's fantastic. Yes, ma'am. I know that, uh, you know, in the Marine Corps, you know, people have certain jobs to do and that it requires a certain level of expertise for pretty much every job in the Marine Corps. Would you like to highlight for us some of the expertise that you've developed over the years? Sure. Uh, grew up, uh, my background was um, strictly the infantry. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up through the infantry, uh, most of my time was either in that field or also I was working with the Department of State to work in security throughout the embassies around the world. Uh, That's pretty impressive, Marty. Which sort of embassies did you work at? Uh, well, uh, back in 2000, well, early 1990, 91, 92, uh, Belgrade, Yugoslavia. During that time, I was a young corporal traveling around the world in Yugoslavia, uh, and then from there traveled out to Santiago, Chile, uh, during that time when there was some unrest going on in that country. Uh, again, a young lad that was unafraid and experiencing life for uh, its full potential. That's great. Um, as a gunny, went back out uh, from the, the standard infantry aspect, but went back out to the uh, embassies working in Vladivostok, Russia, as well as uh, Caracas, Venezuela. Also had the opportunity to go out uh, to Pyongyang, North Korea, as one of the uh, Marines that went forward uh, into Pyongyang with Madeleine Albright at that time as wow. the Secretary of State. Wow. You've yes, traveled the world. Traveled the world, yes. You've been to how many countries, Marty? Uh, right now it's at, at 100, about 182 countries, oh, uh, hit all seven continents, and uh, again a whirlwind tour that allowed wow. me to see uh, what what this great earth had to offer. That's awesome. It's certainly the, uh, the career for somebody who wants to travel and see the world, right? Yes. I know that you've uh, had some pretty astounding management portfolios throughout your career as well. And in fact, I think you've managed a project that was valued at $8 billion even. Um, uh, so I'd like to explore that a little bit more with you. Um, I suppose m many people who are hiring veterans don't actually really realise that you, you have quite significant portfolios in asset management, resource management and financial management. Could you share with us a bit of your experience and then how might veterans actually present that so that hiring professionals value it and understand it? and want to grab it, you know? Sure. No, I completely understand the question, Vanessa. I think that a majority of military members look at money almost as non-existent. And when I say that, I'm not saying that, they, that we teach that. It's not the case. Mm -hmm. We look at it from a different window. Uh, if something needs to be done in a warfare environment or in an environment that 
uh, is immediate, we can pretty much grab resources to make it uh, flow to meet the needs of the warfighter or the contingency that the armed forces is out there doing. When you talk resources, what do you mean? Resources is anything and everything. Uh, you look at a, a normal Marine that goes through the pipeline to become a Marine, average cost anywhere from two hundred to four hundred thousand wow. dollars. Yeah. Uh, you look at a specialist or someone that's in the uh, special force type environment, again there's a cost associated with it, mm -hmm. but that resource, when you look at it and account for it in a financial aspect, there is a, a substantial amount of money there. There is, yeah. Yes ma'am. So when you also look at transportation, you have the resources, the individual, but you also need to get that resource to the location. What does it cost to get that aircraft, a big C-5 aircraft, which is a transport aircraft, not only the fuel to get it there, the maintenance to get there, right. everything else that is transcribed to actually account for how much time is it, that aircraft going to be there, how long is it going to be standing there, what mm. is the maintenance cost to leave it there and to get it back. And then from there, what is the sustainment piece? So just those three pieces, not only the resource, the actual movement to get that piece there, and then the sustainment ability of that resource. Right. All those pieces fold into that portfolio of just the management perspective of money. Right. Yes, and I think you were manager, managing a really you know, huge portfolio with a movement into Afghanistan, right? Was that the project that was valued at $8 billion? Correct. One of the, one, as the operations chief for RC Southwest, uh, this was uh, during the time of 2012 to 13, and as the Marines were pulling out of that segmented area, one of the options that we had was, again, we were looking at everything as a board member that was on the board that was looking at all the contracts and financial uh, mm -hmm. uh, obligations that we had mm -hmm. within that region. Uh, we saw billions of dollars that was being yeah. accounted for, uh, mm -hmm. contractors to uh, sustainment, to sustainability, to equipment, to movement. Right. But as al also with that comes the withdrawal. And as we were looking at the withdrawal and recuperation of gear, whether or not the gear was sustainable, right. the agricultural limitations, I mean, there were so many different variables and you'd look at those daily uh, and you had a hand in actually trying to process that information yeah. and giving it to the decision maker to make sure that uh, he had all the variables ready to go. They're really huge, really huge numbers sometimes with, Correct. you know, military that I work with. Can you give us some tips or maybe some transitioning military, some tips on how they might be able to present their portfolio and their management capabilities yeah. in, in ways that help with their transition? I, I would think that, again, the three variables would be, again, the resource. What is the resource uh, yeah. would be number one. Number two is the transportation of that resource. Where do I need to get it to? And then third would be the, how do I sustain it? Yeah. Uh, from the young Marine, soldier, sailor, Air Force, Coast Guardsman, again, even the young one has a viable part towards money. He right. just doesn't understand it yet because he sees it as, I got to move this widget to do yeah. this job. But if they break it down and really define, they're really, um, you know, responsible for personnel, they're responsible for um, financial assets or, you know, the, even the, the value of equipment and weaponry has a value tag. Correct. Um, a junior, even the most junior military person is responsible for. And I say this when I work with veterans, you know, they can be managing $70,000 worth of assets and they don't realise. And I go, lose it or break it. Do you get your job or do you get into trouble? And that helps them understand, yeah, they're Correct. responsible. Correct. Um, so thanks for sharing that with us, Marty. Um, I know that on your LinkedIn profile, which is pretty actually impressive, I've got to say, um, I know one of the ways that you actually present the, the I suppose, resource management portfolio that you have on LinkedIn is you actually break it down and you let people know that you've managed this many employees, you know, this size project and this size um, value of assets. Mm -hmm. Is that a great way to be able to help I think people understand. I think from a military aspect. We've got a screenshot up of your LinkedIn. It's pretty sharp there, per Marty. Perfect. This, uh, with help uh, over a year and a half ago, I started learning the impact of LinkedIn. And what it done here specifically for me was allowed me to say that, to give my story, to right. show them exactly, as you're describing, that portfolio aspect of financial, that portfolio aspect of yeah. management of personnel. Uh, resources and all the variables that allowed me to put it on paper and say this dear employer this is exactly what I've done as right. a 30 year veteran within the right. uh, service. It's a really great way to present it. It allows them to understand it and value it and see how it applies you know to their organization and I think it's a great way to go and I think if anyone can check out your LinkedIn profile they'll be able to see some great ways of presenting that expertise. 
Marty, there's just no doubt that you're loyal. I mean, for anyone to serve 30 years with one organisation is really outstanding. And I suppose what we see today with the millennial generation is it's hard to have anybody in a career now for three or four years with one organisation, let alone 30. So I hope you'd be able to share with us a little bit of insight about what's kept you around in one job with one organisation for so long. Tell us about the people, the work you do, the organisation, what's, what's kept you? I think uh, for me, for 30 years, I mean, there have been challenges. I, I, I can say that everyone that's been in the service uh, has met those challenges. Uh, but in their heart of hearts, they have a desire to do something more than just themselves and produce something that is almost an intangible asset in relation to, I, I belong to that brotherhood. Right. Um, over the years, I've had the opportunity to travel, to see uh, so many things. In this picture, I'm in Vladivostok, Russia, with one of the, uh, one awesome. of the lieutenant colonels. Uh, just being able to see the world, but the people you meet, that is truly what has kept me in the military right. for as long as I stayed uh, yeah. to this point. Esprit de corps is really important, uh, it, and particularly with the Marine Corps, right? That is correct. Yeah, I'd say with any service, even within the service, right. there may be banter, yet in the end, when it's you know just walking down the street and you get that connection, you truly right. understand that uh, it, it, it is all a, a, truly a brotherhood. Yeah, it is. And it's global. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, and, you know, one of the things I like to encourage veterans to do when I work with a lot of transitioning uh, military to prepare them for their next career success. And, you know, one of the things that's really important is to, you know, find that new tribe once you leave. And that's really about connecting with your, your brotherhood or sisterhood, you know, all Correct. across the globe and the, the people that really understand uh, your career background and, and they'll bend over backwards for you, I promise. It's great. Thanks, Marty. Some yes, of those mate. photos are really terrific to see <laughs> you as a youngster. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, I know that you've travelled so much uh, throughout your career. You've seen the world, 120 countries. You've achieved a lot and, uh, and you've probably seen some of the, you know, toughest things that anybody should ever see. Um, but if you were to reflect on your past 30 years, this enjoyable, accomplished career, can you share with us two things that, that stand out to you as being, you know, mm. two things that you're most proud of accomplishing throughout that career? I, I think the, one of the biggest things was obviously dealt with adversary, uh, ad, you know, adversity and actually came ahead of it. Uh, definitely made myself a marketable entity. Uh, became focused and actually wanted attained my goals. Uh, there's the roles and then the goals, but obviously with those goals, attaining them and being focused enough to truly set myself apart from uh, what, is, what is normal and what is abnormal in a sense. Uh, so I'd say roles and goals kept those clean to make sure that I had a, a goal to achieve at the end. And then the, uh, the roles, you know, keeping my honor clean in a sense to literally stand out and say, you know, I've done it with all the vigor to do it the right way. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. I know you've done some some amazing things across the globe, and I think people can tune into your LinkedIn profile and learn a little bit more. I like people to, when they're looking at transitioning, to start thinking about you know daydream a lot. You know, I like oh, to yeah. encourage that. But you know, we all have things in our life that we're passionate about, or maybe it's an interest that we've had for the majority of our life. And you have a pretty fascinating one that I hope you might share a little bit with us about. I know that you've been collecting coins since you were a child. One of the things, yes, you're, you're absolutely right, and all these ventures that I've done throughout the countries around the world and even throughout the United States, uh, I'm a numismatic, a, a numismatic uh, coin collector, and That's I've been doing awesome. it since I was a little child. Uh, everything from rare gold coins, rare silver coins, uh, which is great, uh, but I, even now I still progress and still go to classes to try and learn more about it as I retire. And That's learn. fantastic. Thanks for sharing that, that yes, with us, Marty. Um, we're about to take a short break now. This is Keys to Success on Think Tank live streaming network series weekly, which airs on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha, I'm Chantel Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. This show is for you. It's all about inspiring and empowering girls of the future to do what they love, get out there and be healthy, fit and confident. If you're up for that, 11 a.m. every Wednesday. I'll see you there. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. 
We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. I know you're bored this summer. You're just sitting at home, figuring out what to do, go to the beach, spend some time with ThinkTech Hawaii. Spend the time thinking about how you can contribute to Hawaii and make it a better place to live. And start watching some of the programs on ThinkTech, including Stan the Energy Man, where you'll learn all about everything energy, especially hydrogen and transportation. So we'll see you every Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Stan the Energy Man here on ThinkTech Hawaii. Aloha. Well, welcome back. This is Keys to Success on Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays, 11 a.m. Thanks for tuning in. We encourage you to call into our phone number, which you can see at the bottom of the screen, or join the conversation and tweet us at Think Tech HI on Twitter. We've been speaking with Master Gunnery Sergeant Martin Trujillo, the Operations Chief for Marine Corps Forces Pacific in Hawaii. Thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, we're excited to talk with Marty a little bit more. Our theme for today is thank you past for the lessons, um, dear future, I'm ready now. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Um, so Marty, congratulations. We know that you're fast approaching your 30 year retirement mark, which is pretty phenomenal. And as you get ready now to transition to your new career, what's there for Marty? What's in your future? We know you've probably got another 20 or 30 years left of work in you. What are you daydreaming about doing? And do you know yet where you want to go to? Uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, just as we talked about my hobby, one of the things, uh, I went back to Colorado. Colorado's my home state. Right. Uh, that's where I, I want to go back to. I want to get back to the seasons. I want to get back to the snow, the autumns, the summers and the springs. Uh, in that, all that being said, uh, I have leveraged the LinkedIn aspect uh, to get back to Colorado. And let me explain how I did that in a sense. I went back and as I started learning about LinkedIn about a year ago, one of the things that I did was I used my core group within the institution, the Marine Corps, to get those like-minded individuals that we talked about earlier. Uh, but then it started coming to full fruition. I started understanding the power of LinkedIn. Right. And what I started doing was looking at from an operational perspective, a project management, program management perspective, going out to Colorado. Right. And in doing so, what I was doing was strategically looking for people that had that same desire that I had in relation to those same subjects right. and actually started connecting with them on LinkedIn. In doing that, when I went back home about a month ago, I went and spoke with about four of those individuals to start that network on a personal basis and actually open the door for me now to, when I transfer, when I actually walk out of the Marine Corps, already have that door open. Now I get to choose what I would like to do or what right. I'd like to pursue in the future. That's really exciting, Marty, and that's really great advice for people is to, uh, you can actually use LinkedIn strategically to find people that you want in your network and engage with them. Do you feel like you've been able to develop really strong relationships with people that you haven't met before? Uh, I, without a doubt. Right. Uh, as, a, as a resume perspective, uh, you look and you see a resume that comes across, it's very dry and mundane. With LinkedIn, you see the whole story. Uh, on my LinkedIn pro profile, there's- That's are, if someone's done it. That, that's correct. Right. And, that, and it, it takes some time, but I mean, it's yes. through trial and error that it you're does. truly gonna see what, that, what it can actually produce for you. Right. Uh, but I think that once, once now that mine is, I wouldn't say it's done because I'm constantly it's updating good though, the information. Marty, I've got to say. <laughs> uh, but it, it is open. Coming up. from the LinkedIn Maven, it's good. It's no, I, getting there. It's I, really I, sharp. But I, I tell you, Vanessa, if it wasn't yeah. for people showing me and asking, yeah. "Hey, well, how? Why did you do it this way? Why mm -hmm. did it this way?" Or I said it that way simply because it became the norm of yeah. how people were communicating in that yeah. in that forum. We just saw a screenshot of your LinkedIn profile there, and it will actually, I, I call that a portfolio now, so I like to encourage people to uh, develop a portfolio or a full body of work. And that includes imagery mm -hmm. that helps validate this experience, this expertise, and you've been leveraging that very well on LinkedIn. I, it, it adds that extra pizzazz and that wow factor, and it demonstrates and helps people understand more thoroughly what it is that you do and what you have to offer. So well done on that, and I can see that um, that has probably made a difference in people being able to trust you more readily if you don't know them, you know, when you're joining Correct. their network, right? Yes, yes, without a doubt. That's fantastic. What tips would you offer um, other veterans who are at the stage now of maybe a year out from transition thinking, 
or what do I do? <laughs> I, I would, if they had a year, they have to get started now. I mean, there is, there is on LinkedIn, on right? LinkedIn because there is no time to, there's no time better than the present. Right. If they've got three years, now's the time to start. Uh, if they got five years, you need, they need to start looking at how do they start leveraging that in time in relation to right. evaluations and stuff along that lines to put it onto the system. Do you feel that people would get value out of being on LinkedIn for their current jobs? Without a doubt. In the lead up to their transition? With, without right, a doubt, yeah. because it gives the option for that direct supervisor to give feedback on whether or not that, you know, on what that individual had done. In my case, one of my previous bosses, uh, my operations officer, yeah. uh, direct quotes saying, right hand man, this, he is the it's guy fantastic. that can fix anything. You know, and, and the recommendations are really important. Yes. They validate your experience and your expertise. And when you have, you know, leaders within your profession giving you a pat on the back, it's very important for your professional credibility. And they're valuable things that people can start developing right over the, Correct. the lead up to transition. I like to encourage veterans to be on LinkedIn three and four years before their transition, not just create a profile when they're in that transition pipeline. Correct. Would you agree with uh, that? Without a doubt. Uh, they awesome. need to have that time in order to draft it, look at it, and then start using that to go out to the network. Because again, if, if, if the network stays within the organization, right. in my case, within the Marine Corps, right. Well, I'll have a great network of Marines, but realistically, I'm not touching what I really want to do. I don't want to be a Marine for 88 years. I want to oh. be a Marine for 30, yeah. retire, and I want to go see what else the world has to offer. Right, and, and use that expertise, that valuable expertise that you have towards your new career. Correct. And LinkedIn really gives you that platform to be able to present it in a really great way. Without a doubt, the best platform that's out there. I, you know, I think transition or leaving the military after 20 or 30 or even 40 years um, can be a really daunting process. And uh, I suppose really, you know, I hear you talk about LinkedIn and how important it is. Um, can you offer some other insight or tips for transitioning military? Uh, within the military aspect, again, it's it's time. That time is you you need to get onto a forum such as this or a platform such as right. this, uh, utilizing the technology to order to tell your story. Right. Uh, everyone has a different story that's out there, but again, from the uh, the abilities that I had or the opportunities that I had to travel the world, to uh, you know. Yeah shake the hand of Colin Powell when he was the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff to uh, go and be the... Uh, it's a great photo. I, need, I think you need to put it on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of these things, I mean, again, tell the story in LinkedIn that I think right. a lot of people, uh, they, they don't know, but that fascination does not right. allow for... Oh, it's great. Doesn't allow for a... Uh, a true conceptual design of where where did he come from and understanding why he was why he right, feels it was important. Right. And that's a big show of photo, Marty. Yes, but uh, you know, we talked about a resume. And a lot of people put a lot of effort into a resume, um, and I feel that the LinkedIn profile um, can represent you, your brand, and your professional career story, I think a thousand times better than a resume today yes. in that you can include the images and the recommendations and, you know, the, the skills endorsement validate your skills as well. So I, I don't know, would you be encouraging people to put more time into developing their LinkedIn portfolio yes. over a resume? W without a doubt. The, the LinkedIn portfolio is going to write your resume. I mean, that's, right. it's, once that portfolio is complete, then yeah. it becomes very simple to tailor that, that right resume for whatever job it's almost it is. like tailoring it down really, exactly it? yeah so as i as i go into my my subset or my linkedin i can pull it into a pdf format there's that great screenshot of yeah. marty's linkedin profile in his summary where he really highlights his professional management portfolio um you know and, and it's you know when you have these valuable assets it, it's important to actually present them in a way that hiring professionals understand and value and that's a really great way a good example marty of doing that that you know, maybe some other veterans could copy yours. Oh, sure. No, I would <laughs> love that. get on and check out your LinkedIn profile. You know, we've talked a lot about the military, but we have a lot of viewers and listeners who, uh, who aren't in the military. They're in the civilian world, and some of them may be looking at re-entering the workforce or changing career. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this current career marketplace is different than the one five years ago or even ten years ago. What tips would you offer um, civilian career changes? Uh, same same advice, and I'd say that from a perspective of LinkedIn itself. The technology is there, and it's already allowing so many 
again, even the younger generations, the millennials, uh, the people in the workforce, you got to figure we've got four different age gaps that are out there that are, are competing for these jobs. Right. The platform in this case becomes the technology being linked in that right. uh, I think that as the template is uh, like the template I've already used right. uh, becomes really the mainstay to right. uh, what is the standard on how they can present that information. Right. Whether or not they've done the military, is it, it doesn't matter. It, it's, right. it still applies to everybody uh, from a civilian to a, a, a high school individual that's going for their job for the first time. I think so too. You know, it's a high tech, new age um, environment. You really need to present yourself in a tech savvy way and LinkedIn's a great way to be able to do that. Correct. You know? often for free without, yeah. you know, necessarily having your own branded website, which could cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, Marty, one of the um, themes for the show is we, we love to get from our, view, from our uh, guests um, what your top three success habits are. So be really interested in you being able to share that with our viewers today. Top three. Top three success habits. Success habits. I would say number one would be never be afraid to say no to distraction because when you need the skill immediately, uh, in my case, been through uh, worse situations to uh, you name it, uh, but in worse situations being able to actually c execute when you need to. That's number one. Great. Uh, number two, read. We always, we actually always do, readers are leaders. Uh, readers but are I, leaders. But I think one of the problems is we always do everything physical, but we never exercise our mind. We yeah. forget to do that. It's awesome. It's a good tip. Yes, ma'am. The last one is always compete. Doesn't matter if you win or learn, but you choose to fail. And if you fail, then obviously you just negated everything that you attempted to do. So either you win or you, you either win or you learn. That's awesome, Marty. That's really fantastic. Great tips. I Hi. think people are writing those down as we <laughs> speak. Look, that time just flew. That was really yes. enjoyable talking to you and learning from you today. And I'm sure our viewers and listeners have got a great deal uh, from you that they can learn from. Uh, so thank you so much. So we're out of time. We do need to wrap yes. it up. Thank you so much, Master Gunnery Sergeant Martin Trujillo, for joining us today on the show. Uh, you can view the words of wisdom today from Marty Trujillo at newmanconsultingservices.com or at their landing page, danelia.org. Thanks to our viewers and listeners for tuning in. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Zuri Bender, and to Nick Sexton, our floor manager. And of course, great thanks to Jay Fidel, the executive producer who puts it all together for us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, be sure to tune in next week. Daniela and John will be back on Thursday at 11 a.m. And it's been fantastic being here with you today. Thank you and aloha, everyone.